What's up, people? Welcome to another edition of the New Breed Podcast, the world's best podcast. Talk about everything brutal, new death, hard, slam, grind, thrash, core, metal. I am one half of your hosting duo, Jay Horsecow. With me, I have my partner in crime, the notorious TIM, Tim Anderson Jr. Tim, how's it going? Great. Fucking We're both great. wearing black hoodies. This is not a... With, with yeah. red, yeah. With yeah, red. yeah. This is kind of a kind of interesting. All right, so what are we talking about this week, folks? This week, Tim and I are deep diving into, I would argue, one of the best movie soundtracks ever made. The soundtrack to October 1998's um, Cinema Flop, Truth Be Told, Strange Land by Dee Snyder. So, Tim, I'm going to start off by asking you the obvious question. Is this a movie around a soundtrack or is this a soundtrack that augments a movie? I would go with the latter. Okay. okay. I, it's kind of hard to say, though, because the songs placed in the movie are p- pretty well. Like, and even the movie gives you off, gives off like a, um, it gives off like a teeny, not a teeny bopper film, but it gives off like a film that's directed towards like an 18 year old or a 20 year old. Yes. And can we get this out of the way? So Tim and I both watched this episode, uh, both watched the movie before we did this episode, along with listening to the music, because we wanted to really get some backstory. And Tim, it doesn't hold up well, does it? No, I'll tell you what, though. I loved it when I was a kid, though. Oh, yeah, me too. Me too. I loved it when I was in college. I'm like, man, this is great. Now it's like you got you got Wayne Grove from Heat as the main (laughs) character. Yeah, you've got the nurse from ER as his daughter. You have Amy Smart as the daughter's best friend who teaches them how to use the internet. Uh, it's just, Freddy Krueger plays the one antagonist. Like yeah. it's it's dated, but I understand. And and when we talk, and I don't know if we're going to go into the background tip, but when we talk about like the genesis of this movie, where D. Snyder was coming from, where he was exposed to the idea of modern primitives, and he wanted to bring that into main mainstream culture. I mean. If you think about what he was trying to do, he basically kind of nails it. The tattoos, the piercings, the body modification. Um, there's that one scene early on where the tow truck driver is explaining to them what a septum spike is. Yeah. And how hilarious. big. the pi- Oh, this is an eight gauge. And what you got there, that's a zero. So you need to find somebody who's got a hole in their septum that you can put your finger through. Like, <laughs> like the, ex- ex- the expository dialogue to try and add background was really kind of dicey. Yeah, I mean, it's like a C movie. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> yes. I remember. I remember the first time I seen it. My uncle, fucking my uncle's in all that shit. He's a tattoo artist, so like, he's like, oh, uh, he's like, you want to get tattooed tonight? Or like, we were. He was tattooing me that night, and we always would just put movies on, and he put Strange Land on. I'm just watching it, and like, yeah, this movie's so fuck cool. But that's also me when I'm fucking like 19 years old. Yes, that, that was the that was the demo I think they were shooting for that demographic at the time. The the dad that doesn't know how to work a chat room and they has yeah. to have the, the the daughter's cousin come out like laughable. Um, definitely laughable. But like it's for for the time that it came out, it was definitely cool. I think you know. What I mean, and it's, now to your point, Tim. Now seeing somebody with tattoos on their face or piercings, you're kind of just like. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, back okay. then, if D. Snyder walks out looking like that, we'll say I'm 39 now. 20 years ago, that's a fucking yeah. You're like, whoa, what the fuck yeah, is that? What is this? Yeah, it was definitely it was not as socially ex- um, accepted as it is now. Tattoos and piercings. Uh, no, I don't know. So here's the funny thing: when when they finally show his face, and he's got all the piercings in his face, and he turns to the camera, I said out loud. Holy shit, he looks like Al Jurgensen. <laughs> yeah, <he does>. yeah <laughs> right? That's funny. Right? It, Al would have been perfect for the movie. Perfectly. Perfectly. So yeah. let's let's go in about the soundtrack, Tim. So um I don't think I, I don't have I don't have any particular notes on the making behind the soundtrack. I know he was trying to find, I remember from an interview I I I found somewhere on the internet he was trying to find bands that were representing that modern sound along with some of the stuff that was the bigger names of the time. Remember this is remember, folks, this is 1998. Yeah. Um. So it's a totally different world. Um. This is when new metal is at its biggest all time high. If you want yes, to say that. Yes. I mean, it is. It is finally hitting stride at this point. Corn is a reg. Uh. Corn is established. Uh. The second album has already come out. Um. Limp Biscuit is established. The Deftones have established. This is the groundswell is building. 
And you can tell by the bands that are actually on the soundtrack. I mean, this is kind of like a quasi Ozfest 98 lineup. Yo, you, you know who I totally forgot about was Bile. Oh, I, I, when we get to that song, I want to talk about that band because they were actually in the movie, too. Yeah, yeah. That's a fucking great record. Which one? Techno Horror? Ah, uh, shit. What's it called? See, I didn't write all the songs down because I, I fucking didn't have time, but I'm going to go on to trusty Google right now. Trusty Wikipedia. How about that? Yeah, the, their, I think the big full length that they did around that time was Techno Horror because right before that was the EP Suck Pump, which was great. I think you might be... Hold on one second. It has Interstate yeah. Hate Anthem on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I so I made a playlist of all the songs on Apple Music and then like there was uh, some of them weren't even on there. And I was like, I guess <laughs> like I'm trying to figure out like were some of these songs only meant for a soundtrack or and some of these so, songs weren't. Thanks for bringing that up because I wanted to ask that. And I think we talked about this briefly when we did our soundtracks episode. I personally like it when a band does something they've never done anywhere else on a soundtrack because yeah. that makes you want to buy the soundtrack. And there were, I think there were one, two, three, four, uh, four or five songs on this that, soundtrack that were not on any other album. Yeah. They I were think not on that artist's release. I think you're right. Cause there's about four or five I couldn't find. Yeah. So the yeah, and, bio song is called in league. Yes. Yes. Um, so and it sounds amazing in the movie, like all the double bass and the chorus and shit. I oh, like, yeah, absolutely. It's it's heavy. I mean, I saw them live. I know I've, t- I've definitely told the story. I saw them live at the WSOU event and it was wild. Like it was wild. They had, the you know, the basses is shirtless and they all had paint on and it was smoke machines. It was kind of nuts. Um so what, let's go through the songs, Tim. Let's go through the songs. So the first song we have here is, uh, of course, it's his movie, so he's going to lead it off. D. Snyder with In Conclusion. There's a track I could not find, so I'm assuming he did this just for this. Yes, yes. So I will I will give you the, the cheat notes. Uh, it is definitely 80s. Definitely 80s thrash, considering he comes from Twisted Sister. It's not too far off. There is a Middle Eastern sitar in the middle of the song, which you're like, okay, it's the 80s. It's the late 90s. We're going to do the sitar. We're going to do some goofy shit. <laughs> um, not a bad song, but kind of kind of the fish out of water track. This and the last song on the album, which is Twisted Sister, are fish out of water tracks because they don't match the vibe of the rest of the album. Not, not that they don't match it, but like... I kind of feel like, yeah, he could have done something a little heavier to match like the output of what was really going on. But it's also at the same time, I mean, it's fucking twisted sister. You know what you're going to get with that. Yeah. Yeah. No, no surprises there. <laughs> we got what we were expecting, but yeah, just not, I mean, whatever, whatever. It was also to 1998. So back yes, then this that is stuff true. was still prevalent in, this is in true. metal. You know what I mean? So so now we're starting to get into the now we start out right so now we have Seven Dust and Breathe. This was a song that was unique to the soundtrack. It showed up on the remastered re-release of the self-titled album in the in the yeah. early aughts. Um, I think this song fits the aesthetic of the movie perfectly. The underwater vocals to start it. I love that almost backbeat in the chorus. I I mean they're a solid band. It's a we probably should prioritize deep diving into that first album sometime in next Absolutely. year because it's Fucking a great movie. album but this made me actually i finished i finished listening to this song i stopped listening to the soundtrack i went back and listened to the first album because i forgot how well made i forgot the songs that they made how well made they actually were oh yeah like crisp. terminator and shit oh, yeah man, crisp I would, is the word i would use to describe them crisp in a league of their own kind of thing yeah, very much so i mean they yeah. get lumped in with the other bands that you know, I, I don't want to say proto butt rocky, but they get lumped in with those bands that built longevity in their career. You know, like Nonpoint. Yeah, they get yeah, lumped yeah. in with Nonpoint, and while they they have moments that sound alike, they really don't sound that much alike. Yeah, speaking of proto butt rock, you got fucking people are hating that shit on Reddit. Like I thought they're the one dude like. Like you, you were describing like some band on there, like, and you're like, yeah, more like proto butt rock, and the dude was like, fucking hate that term, fuck that. And then he had, I don't like, even remember where that came from. But it. People were fired up. Yeah, well, they'll get over it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I, I have to figure out what it was again because I was reading it and I was fucking dying, dude. I'm <sighs> like, I love when he just fires people up on there. 
I don't even mean to. I just, I say what I think. I don't overthink it. And I hit send and go. So, <laughs> so we've got, we, so let's, let's paint the picture here, Tim. We've got D Snyder, 80s thrash. Then we've got Seven Dust, which is an up and coming new metal band. Um, this song, this song again shows up on the sound, on the re-release of the self titles This is probably in between this and Alone, I would assume, timing wise. Because Alone was 99, yes? Home. Home was 99. Yeah. Okay. So the, right in the middle. Yep. So we've got T Snyder and Seven Us, and then who do we get hit with, Tim? Megadeth. Your favorite. Uh, Megadeth you know with a I like secret a lot of Megadeth. place. Yeah, oh, I so like do I. A lot. I like a lot of Megadeth, but the newer shit is corny, and but, that one record is horrible. So think about the t- think about if, if you're envisioning the Megadeth career on a timeline. Think about where this album falls. It's right after Cryptic Writings. It's heading into Risk, which oh. is the album we don't like to talk about. So the sound, you can hear where they were going. Uh, it's got the sitar, just like the intro track by D. Snyder. I, I, the, the, when I was writing my notes, all I wrote was dot, 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 meh, metal. Yeah. This is it. It's basically not terrible. the same thing. It's not me. terrible. It's not great. It just kind of is. And for a band with, for the band who put out Rust in Peace, what are we getting here? Well, yeah, I, I seen a quote from some musician the other day, and I thought it, I thought it was great for a lot of people. He was like, "Oh, it was when it was when Meta- the Metallica song came out. It wasn't Metallica who said it; it was somebody else. I forget. I really wish I knew who said this, but he was like, I love how people are bitching about Metallica. You know, putting out something that sounds kind of like their old shit, but in a new flavor. And he's like." If you want to listen to their old shit, just buy their old shit. And I was oh, like, Oh, I did see that. And I was like, Yeah, he's right. Yeah. Who was? Do you remember who that was? No, no. You want somebody said, You want to listen to my old shit? Buy my old shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what. I'm, yeah. Yeah. It's exactly <laughs> what I seen. And I was like, That's fucking hilarious to see because fucking it probably great. shut so many people up. It's like, you know, like I shit on the new Metallica song because honestly, I just like to troll people and I just like people to get pissed off at me. But it's usually it's my friends. But. Yeah. It, they're right, though. If you want to hear the old shit, just fucking listen to the old shit. Yeah. Yeah. That just like, pull dude, out the old fucking album. Nobody's going like to get mad at you. Do you think they're going to put out Blackened again? No. Kind of cool if they tried to, though, right? Yeah. 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 But they're not, you're <laughs> never going to hear, black. they're never going to put out Injustice for All again. You know what I mean? And if they do, there better be a fucking bass guitar on it. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Jason Newstead and the magical mystery mystery uh disappearing one, bass. One more thing about that Metallica song is I love how many people shred it Lars. They're like, wow, they're like, there's no way that's him playing drums. I loved how there was there's that old quote from James where they said they had the interviewer asked James, is Lars the best drummer in metal? And James's response was Lars isn't even the best drummer in Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Uh you gotta love it, trolling and spider. So now let's come out of Megadeth. Let's go to another band, Megadeth Contemporary, Pantera. This is where you come from. So this again, this was a unique song. This only showed up on the official live 101 proof. Yeah, which one by of, the way, one of my favorite songs by them. If you haven't heard the live version of Domination slash Hollow on that CD, there is something your life is not worth living. I'm you, gonna go out and say it right now. That is the best live album ever made. It fucking sounds so fucking good. Yeah. I love the, that record. The ending of Suicide Note Part Two, that breakdown to to end all breakdowns. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, it's that's something else. But so this is this. I mean, this the things that jumped out at me. It's a typical Chuggy Pantera song, but it's got that. And I don't know how to describe it other than a stomp rhythm. Yeah. And that is the rhythm that they perfected. That is why when you have people coming out of the woodwork saying, oh, well, Pantera had new metal moments. That's because new metal stole that stomp rhythm from them because they did yeah. it best. Dude, if you listen to Pantera's discography, they pretty much had some of the hardest mosh parts ever. Oh, f- the B side of Far Beyond Driven is better than the A side. Yeah, I mean, it's you're 100% correct on that. I mean, some of them songs on there are so vicious. Like it, it, that, that's why so many people fucking love that band because of just the direction that everyone stole. They everyone stole that direction, like you said, and they just fucking lived off it after there. 
Mm-hmm. It's like you, them bands should be happy Pantera didn't keep going because they probably would have just laid most of them the dust. Yes. Could you imagine if like Pantera, Meshuga, Lamb of God all going at the same time? Dude, right? like ridiculous. Uh, it would have been unreal. But yeah, I, this is this is a great song of them. You could see where they were heading into with reinventing the steel with yep. more of a southern rock type um sound, but it's it's vintage Phil, right? And 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 the 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 brothers, the Abbott brothers. I mean, what are you what else are you gonna do? Yeah, I mean, and then Trend Kill was just a fucking that that's a savage record. Mm, not I was not expecting that when it came out. Savage, not record. at all. And yeah. The deep cuts, floods, and some of the other stuff. I, I mean, you could tell Phil was Phil was my, out of his mind on drugs at the time. But yeah, their dude. deep cuts are still fantastic songs on that album. Dude, yesterday don't mean shit. Oh my god. Yeah. Man. Yep. Yep. I always <laughs> yeah. go back to floods. Floods is to me the song on that album where it just got nobody appreciates its brilliance until later. So we've got D. Snyder. And then we've got Seven Dust. So we've got 80s metal. We've got new metal. Then we've got guys doing the traditional truck, Megadeth, uh, traditional, what we consider thrash metal now. Megadeth, Pantera, and this next track, which I quietly love, Anthrax P and V. I could not find this one. What is this a, a this is on one? volume eight? The threat is real. Is it really? Yep. How come I cannot find that on here? Yep. And this is the one that starts off with the cowbell. Took, 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 and and John Karabi was no, not John Karabi. Um, John Bush was still singing for them at the time. Okay. Speaking of but, Anthrax, I just seen them in August, dude. They shred live. Who's the second guitarist? It's is it the guy from Shadows Fall? Yeah. Yep. So it's Scott Ian and him. Yeah. Yep. And it's Frankie Bello is back playing bass, right? I believe so. Yeah. So it's basically their big lineup, except for Dan Spitz. Yeah, dude, they were fucking amazing live. I mean, when you've played together that long, that much, it's got to be like muscle memory. You're not even thinking. Yeah, it's funny because speaking of Anthrax, like I had like, I always thought Ian was kind of a D-bag. Like, I kind of feel like he's full of himself. Mm -hmm. But when I seen them live, I was like, yeah, this dude shreds, man. Have you ever seen, Tim, the S.O.D. live at Budokan? Oh, where Bill, yeah. Billy Milano comes out and jumps into the audience from on top of the speakers. Yeah. When I think of Scott Ian, that's what I think of. That riff and him stomping around the stage. Yeah. Yeah. He just he just has this thing like he's full of himself. But hey, yeah, a little bit. You, you know, you can be after 40 years. Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you've at that point, brother, you've probably kind of earned it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let it so, go. So on this chunk of the of the album, we had your your thrash. I mean, you had Megadeth, Pantera, Anthrax. All it was missing was Metallica and Slayer. Yeah, you've had Seven Dust. Now we dig into the. Now it's like okay, throw the switch. Old guys, Metamucil, stage left, stage right. Here comes new metal, and what do they lead off with? The best song of the album, not up for debate. Absent by Snot. Yep. Uh, Shows up in the movie. All, and that's the other thing about this soundtrack. All of these songs show up in the movie at different times. It might just be clips. It might be playing in the background. But if you haven't seen this movie, all the songs show up. Yeah, um, random times. Yeah. And we've we've talked about this song where Snot went into the studio with Ross Robinson. The label was telling him to re-record the box as a single with Ross Robinson to see what it sounded like. And then Ross said to them, well, why would we re-record something? Why don't we do something new? And the end result is absent, which is the last song ever recorded by Snot with Lynn straight on vocals and it's by far their best composition. And that's the part that makes any video with him so heartbreaking. And we probably yeah. beat this horse to death. They had, they had talent in spades and that next album probably would have been a monster. Yeah. That would have been around the fur level big. I think, I think you're right. I think you're right. With and with a name like that, it was just offensive enough to get people to notice, but not so offensive that you couldn't have a kid wearing a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would I would wear the shirt with the dog on there, tennis ball, mm-hmm. pocket, a shirt rule. I I had one. I think my brother probably still has. He has all my old merch. So we got to get come your brother off, on. I I do. I yeah, it's a good idea. I should text him and see if he would come on. Going through his closet, holding up shit. Um, <clears throat> so we've done snot. Now let's go to another band, which I think I'm one of like the few, the 10 people on the planet that actually love this band. Yeah. Day in the Life, uh, dual vocalist attack. The song is Street Justice. One of the vocalists who does, I believe, the highs is um, a ex-podcast host of our good buddy, Sam Hoyo. Shout out to Sam Hoyos and Playing Dead. That new EP is damn good. Um, it is. 
This is, again, this is a song specifically for this album. And I I wish, Tim, I wish they hadn't have been on TVT and maybe had gotten noticed. Yeah, you know what? The TVT back then was kind of like, that. That I think the label, and we've talked about this, the label that just signed whatever they thought was going to be big. And then when they had a big artist, yeah. like Seven Dust, it's like they kind of just threw a day in the life in the background. It's kind of like Roadrunner throwing fucking glass show in the background. And Yep. Yep. And it's also the um, also some of these bands, though, had a little bit to do with it, because if you did you listen to that episode of Life is Peachy where he interviewed the DJ from Head P.E.? Yeah. Where he talked about how, you know, we signed to Jive. And we were like, this is awesome. We're going to be the heaviest act on Jive and didn't really work out. Yep. And I, while I have while I applaud their their chutzpah for giving that a go. You had to know that was coming. They don't really understand your product. Exactly. They don't understand what you do. Uh, you, who's going to blame a band for signing the Victory Records if they make metalcore in, in the late nineties, early aughts? I mean, that that's what they know. Hardcore bands on Victory, metal bands on Roadrunner. I mean, you go yeah. with you go with somebody who knows your sound. Look at what Century Media has done lately. All the bands they've signed. What is it? They have. Um, I think they have Blood Incantation. I think. Yep. They have Orthodox. I think forth. they have. Do they have Undeath? Is Undeath them? No, Undeath is prosthetic or no metal bleed, right? Yes, yes, yeah. you're right, you're right. So go with go with a label who knows your style. Well, you got to remember, too. Century Media has the A and R now, so right, right, right. There's not many. There's not many people left playing this game, so you got to kind of go where the market is, right? Well, who who is doing A and R? Is that Monty? Uh, Monty and Mike Gitter. Mike I think that. Mike, I think we got to find a way to get him back on the show. Mike Gitter is the a and God. I follow him on Instagram. He is at every show. I saw him nonstop when I was in Psycho Las Vegas. Like he knows everybody and is at every show and probably has his finger on the, a lot closer to the pulse than 99% of the music, the extreme music population. Yeah. It, it's pretty, you know, you're big when in your, when the emails go back and forth and he's like, I have to make sure I can even talk about that. And it's like, God damn. All right, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. not sure legally what legal is going to clear. So let me talk about that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, Mike, yeah. if you're listening, we want to still want to talk to you. Come on the show. Definitely. So coming off of day in the life we have, here we go right into the new metal cold chamber, not living. Great song. This was on chamber music. I know that for a fact. Great it fucking song. Great record. It, it is a great song. Can I make an uncomfortable confession here? Yeah. I've never heard chamber music. Wow, dude. I've never heard chamber music. I've never heard the second cold, the uh, crazy town album. I have never heard uh, the second dry kill logic album. I have never heard the second Taproot album, the what? second Reveille album. What? Um, yeah. You're going to get, going? you're going to get your the new second metal. primer 55 album. I, I I haven't heard any of those. You're going to get your new metal. Uh, They're going to try badge. and remove my new metal credentials. That right? badge is gone after this nah. episode. Uh, judging by a thread I was on today with Reddit, where it was all people who were 35 and above, us old heads are still floating around. But I've never heard any of those albums. Maybe we should do a, I, I do. We shout out to Jordan. Uh, Jordan's going to do the deep dive of um, Dark Horse by Crazy Town with us because he swears that album is better than the first. And um, we'll find someone to do chamber music. I cannot believe you've never heard chamber music. Never heard it. Wow. I, I, my taste changed, man. I mean, this was what, 98, 99? I had discovered hardcore at this point. Hate breed, getting my ear holes. And then from there, it went right into, uh, we found another album we need to deep dive on, opposite of December. I found Poison the Well, and that was it. Yeah. It was all Truskill and Farrah from there on out. I mean, I don't. I mean, I did the same thing. I just kept the new metal going. Uh, I, well, you know I was, me. I yeah. listened to so much music. I even did that back then. So yeah, you have you. I can't even come close to to finding stuff that you haven't heard. But yeah, no, this was this was a good call chamber song to the point where I I was listening to this and I was waiting for this episode to talk about this so you could make that oh face. Um, I'm actually debating digging in and doing like my own playlist on Spotify of all the second new metal's second albums that I completely missed. And throw all the shit on here. Um, I don't. I don't remember the second orgy album either. Or subscribe to Apple Music, and I'll just send you everything cool. Uh, I can't subscribe to Apple Music. Spotify is so much easier. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this is uh, this is a good Cold Chamber song. I did notice him. It's a little bit more mature than what they did on the first album. Yeah, yeah. The, the, first the dynamics album is... are a bit 
I don't want to say they're they're there, like more there, but there's a maturity to the songwriting. It's not as the first album was great for what it was, but it was very much cut and paste. Like, yeah, like absolutely. copy, control C, control V, control V, control V. And you got 10 songs old sound. Yeah, definitely. not too different. I like this. Yeah, there's a definitely a bit of a more maturity put into the songs. There's there's a lot more electronic feel to it. it it's a, the only thing I hate about chamber music is I hate the distortion in it. It sounds very flat to me. Okay. It works for the record. So, but it's a great fucking record, man. We should really we should really find someone to talk about that with. Yeah, that was so if you're listening and you like chamber music a lot and you want to come on the show, please reach out, let us know. We'll have you on. Um Definitely. So after Cold Chamber, Let's go back to Bile. So this is Bile in League. They were a New York band, right, Tim? Yes. Um, I love that. the If you go back and listen to the original EP, which I don't think is on streaming anywhere, um, it's called Suck Pump. And this, the song from Suck Pump was on the Mortal Kombat soundtrack. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, shit, um, yes, they are a that. New York City industrial band, but that's what the first time I heard them, and I was like, "Whoa, I got to check this shit out." And yeah, then, you know what? Speaking of sound, that's a soundtrack we were doing next is the Mortal Kombat because that yeah. probably got so many people into metal and hardcore. And, I mean, metal and new metal and shit like that. So that's a definitely a soundtrack we should, we got to do. I that's and how people I found- listening don't fucking steal our idea. Yeah, seriously. Tim and I have been drinking and we just throw these ideas out and then other people do them. Um, except if you're one of the Australian guys. If you're Baccio, Death Trip, or Life is Peach, you go for it. Um, <laughs> that's where I found Fear Factory. Me too. Was that Mortal Kombat soundtrack. And it was, yo, what? It, what, what is dude. this? Because it's self-biased resistor, right? Is that no, the song? It's, it's Zero Signal. Zero Signal. Zero Signal. When I fir- dude, when I first heard Zero Signal on that album, I was fucking floored. And I never looked back. I love mm-hmm. that fucking record, man. Uh, Sister Machine Gun is on that soundtrack. Yeah. Napalm Death off Diatribes. Oh, man, I, I, we shouldn't yeah. should pull it apart. But yeah, we are definitely going to. Let me write this down so I don't forget. Um, <laughs> That's the next one we're doing. Fuck it. Uh, Mortal Kombat Mortal... soundtrack coming up in queue. Uh, 2023. See you there. Uh, the soundtrack. So yeah, definitely. I, so the band shows up in the movie again. If you're listening to this or you're watching this and you haven't seen the movie, please find the movie. It's on streaming. Yeah, Cole Chamber is definitely a great fit for this too, as well as the in uh, the bile. So yeah, and, and this for bile, this is so uh, the albums. The album order was Suck Pump was an EP, and then it was Techno Horror, and then it was <laughs> then it was Bile Degradable, which is a great great title considering the name of the band. Um, I got I got to listen to that one. Yeah, it's it's really good. But uh, they this is them moving from the EP was very very heavy. It was very aggressive. Um, feeling like shit. Uh, you are a fucking loser. Um, burnt. Like those songs were really aggressive. With techno horror, they kind of introduced something where it's like, okay, this is listenable. It was it was not Nine Inch Nails listenable or Gravity Kills radio friendly. Another album we should probably need time. Yeah, but the the only the one of the rare albums I've owned that every single song is one word. Every single song title is one word. Um, but this was this was them moving less aggressive to more of a slower, a uh, uh, heavier plodding type of industrial. And again, they yeah. show up in the movie. Uh, Christoph Bear, the bassist, they all show up. It's 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 wild. It's really yeah, wild. Yeah, I remember when that scene came on and I had my surround sound on watching. I was like, yeah, it sounds fucking good. Who is this? And then I fucking looked and I was like, oh, fuck, I forgot about this band. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're still doing stuff. I think they're still putting out EPs and whatnot. Nice. Um, should hit them up. If WSOU is listening, they should do a reunion show of their 10th anniversary show and invite all those bands back on to play. You know what, Tim? We should probably do an episode just on that show and then on the 15th anniversary show, deep dive all the bands. Yeah, but we got to get someone. We got to get someone who is there for it. Like, yeah, from WSOU. You You know know what? They're on. They're on Instagram. I'll reach out. I'll reach out to them. Fuck it. We'll find somebody. So here we are talking about Bile. Now let's talk about Marilyn Manson with Sweet Tooth. Was this? This was on Portrait, right? Yes. Okay. I forgot how much I liked that album. Me too. To the point where I went back and listened to it again because of this soundtrack. Another album we should deep dive. 
Um, yeah, I mean, this, I mean that Antichrist is another one we could do, but but Portrait is Portrait is the first Manson record I heard, and I remember not really caring for it at that time. Right. And but now when I listen to it, I'm like, this is a classic fucking record. It's yes. just it's just perfect. It's very much you can see when you look at what they are now, you're kind of like, what the fuck? But going back and and listening to that, you're like, okay, I can see how this has kind of stayed almost inaudibly behind the scenes with what they've done lately. Yeah. The uh I remember finding this band because they Trent Reznor signed them to nothing. And at that point I was a huge Nine Snails fan. So anything with nothing attached to it, I bought. Definitely. And they opened the uh, I got to see uh interesting here so here's another interesting trivia thing if you watch the nine inch nails double vhs i forget what it was called closer maybe or closure or something um oh zeke's here yeah i think uh yeah yeah the double vhs that was basically like uh i think it was like banned or some shit yes yes yeah zeke how's it going hey (laughs) sorry about that man no worries, oh, man. No worries. Um, we're actually, you know what? We're we're glad you're here because we're wrapping up a conversation we were having around the Strange Land soundtrack. Are you a fan? Uh, so I haven't heard of that. No. Ah, damn. Oh, well, really. Now we're gonna we're gonna give we're gonna give them the crash course. So, um, Tim, let's wrap this one up. So, Marilyn Manson, Sweet Tooth, it's off the first album. But back to my remark about Nine Inch Nails. Um. You know what? We'll actually just cut it. We'll pick it up in the second half. But my, my, I don't want to lose track of the remark of Nine Snails in that video. There's a scene where they get into a bus accident and Robin Fink breaks his finger and the show is canceled. I was there that night. Oh, shit. Okay. I was in the audience at Madison Square Garden where the lights came on and you're like, yo, and this is my senior year of high school. This is March of the Pigs 94. Wow. And the lights come up and you know when the house lights come up when you've been in the venue, you're like, yo, this isn't going to go well. <laughs> and right. and they literally said hey you know we're postponing the show till tomorrow night and they had i think it was billy howardell play okay. the show and he's he is from uh perfect circle he's played with failure he's played with tool so yeah so this is, right. th- this is what we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna um we're gonna come back to strange and finish it right after this interview that's what we're gonna Absolutely. do yep. so i'll piece this together and we'll be good to go all right, so so everyone, you're listening. Hold on one second. We'll be back. All right, we're back. Sorry for that untimed but timed interruption. So we're continuing along with Strange Land. The last song we just talked about was Marilyn Manson's Sweet Tooth off the initial album, the original album. If you like that album and you want to deep dive with us, please reach out and let us know. We'd love to have you on. Now, Tim, let's talk about um, we're going to finish up the, the new metal section of this soundtrack, and then we're going to get weird. So the next new metal song we've got is Soulfly. I for an eye. Well, we don't. We know that was definitely on uh, the first record. Uh huh. That's a great track, though. Yeah, it is. It really, really is. Um, but I mean, if you're talking about a band that represents new metal in a nutshell, probably Soulfly is up there with Limp Biscuit. Yeah, for and, that uh, era, absolutely. Yeah, and but you know, the disappointing thing is again, it's not. It's not a unique. It's not an original. It's something that shows up on the album, which we've already talked about ad nauseum. Um. It's coming off of Soulfly, so we're going to hit arguably... Oh, no, wait. We got one more after this. Uh, another new metal band. This is Head Planet Earth with Serpent Boy, but this is the radio edit. Now, I kind of wonder, Tim, why they chose the radio edit I'm... and not the full song, because in the movie, the scene where this plays, it's a clip that would be in either version of the song. Repeat. I don't remember exactly when this plays in the movie, but yeah, that is odd that they do that. Very, very odd. Um, it's I not eventually... like you can say there's cursing or something because the movie, I mean, mm-hmm. if you can't, if you don't want to have a cursing in that movie, what the fuck are you doing? It wouldn't make any sense. There's naked people the whole time. Yeah. Um, I We need to find someone to deep dive on this album because I really do enjoy it. Again, they were one of those bands they, we talked about it earlier. They signed to Jive and they were going to be the heaviest band on Jive and they, it really never fit. But they did this album. They did Blackout, and then they did, I think, Broke. Broke is the second album, and the third album is Blackout. And all good albums. So this span had some gas in the tank. They really did. They had some juice. Uh, once again, check out the interview with the DJ on our Partner in Crime, the Life is Peachy podcast. He did a great episode where they talked about the orig- origins of the band. It was awesome. Definitely. 
And then we get to Kid Rock with the song Fuck Off. Yeah. Is this is this a unique Tim? I don't remember. I, or was this on even, Amer- this first album, Bob with the Bob, whatever? I didn't even I didn't even want to listen to it, honestly. <laughs> Uh, did you see Sangwasugabog had some ad where they ripped off Kid Rock and they said Sangwasugabog with the bog, uh, Sangwasugabog with the ba bog or something like that? Yeah, it was no, it was but great. That's hilarious. It was great. Um, yeah, it's Kid Rock. Um, arguably his first album was new metal adjacent and deserves inclusion in the new metal pantheon. We are going to have uh, scribble on to talk about that eventually. Uh, hopefully he's getting better. He's on the mend. He had some, uh, some health issues, but we are going to deep dive on that album. And you can tell by Tim's face right now that he is really, really excited for that. Hmm. Can't wait. <laughs> so after kid rock, we go to, and I'm curious to hear what you thought about this, Tim, the clay people with awake. Hey. Nah. So I the notes I wrote is this is Sister Machine Gun vocals with heavy industrial music. Yeah, I mean, it's for what it is, it's not terrible, but it's not something I'm like, eh. yeah, I'll go back to that. I remember that band. I remember the name, but I never really like jumped into that band. So yeah. I kind of just was like, eh, fuck it. We'll talk about it a little bit on the episode, but I'm not really going to dive into that. I don't have time for that. It, they're not bad. I went back and checked out some of their stuff. It's not bad, but it's. To your point, it's kind of forgettable. There was yeah. not enough that made it unique that you would say, I want to go back and listen to that. It exactly. Was, it was it was serviceable. It was talented. It just wasn't nothing that stood out to me. Yeah, for that time frame, yeah, it's serviceable. But for now, it's kind of like, nah, I don't need to go back to that. So now let's go to um, this band. I mean, your favorites. So this is a B-side off of the self-titled album sessions. This is System of a Down with Marmalade. Ugh. Not only is it a good song, not is it not only is it one of their better songs, this is proof positive that their B sides are just as good as the, the stuff that gets left off the album is just as good as the stuff that's on the album. So again, this was a B side to the self-titled. The entire steal this album album, which I think just hit its 20th anniversary, that that entire thing is the B sides from Toxicity. So they had a full album's worth of stuff, which Knowing now, if we knew then what we knew now, we would understand why the next set of albums was a dual album, Hypnotized, Mesmerized, because they're prolific when they write stuff. Yeah, I mean, I mean, everybody knows how I feel about the band, but to have a, a record of just B-sides to hit that good, that that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, insane. I personally didn't even know that, or maybe I didn't, I just didn't remember, but that's crazy. It's insane. Insane it's that you insane. had an entire album of B-sides leak, and then you said, eh. We'll just put it out on a plain tray that says steal this album. And it killed. Yes. Yes. Well, I mean, Intervision, fucking, some of the songs on that album are really good. I mean, fucking Adam has a tattooed on him, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's no accounting for taste. Adam doesn't like the new Blood Incantation album. Um, <laughs> so moving us along, we only got three left here. So we've got Nashville Pussy with I'm the Man. What did you think of this, Tim? I hate that band. I They're just not my thing. It's not my thing. Not at all. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't have much more to say than I listened to it, and I went, okay. Yeah, go same back. thing. Eh, okay. Why is that on here, but okay. So now let's go to an interesting band from New York, Crisis, with Captain Howdy. What'd you think of this? I, uh, I we, We've talked about Crisis a lot, haven't we? Yeah, I think we actually have. We yeah. probably should deep, deep dive, what is it, Dead Set Extermination? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, is that? I think that's the band I always get mixed up with that chick, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. She's the one who had asthma and could, yeah. couldn't breathe when <laughs> yeah. she screamed. Um, yeah. We should probably go in on a couple of those albums because our first two albums are really good, very unique. She's a bit tired. Do, uh, doing vocals on stage, got to hit your inhaler and shit. She, I put her stuff in the same vein as Unsane. Yeah. You know, that kind of avant-garde, kind of weird, um, abrasive sort of hardcore punk metal, what have you. Um, the song though works for the album, like her vocals yeah, no, work does, for the yeah. album. And actually, now she's a she's an author. She's written a bunch of stuff. Mm. Um, she's a she's a performance artist. She's really she's very unique. So definitely check out Karen Crisis. She's a well, you, you probably don't cool. lose you probably don't lose too much oxygen just writing a book. So no. no. <laughs> uh, and the last song on the album. Uh, the heroes are hard to find by Twisted Sister. Yeah, I don't really care for Twisted Sister at all. It was Twisted Sister, and this is a long album. How many songs was this? 
It's 86 minutes. Uh, 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 16, 18 songs on this album. It's a long album. By the time I got yeah. Twisted Sister, I got about a minute in. I'm like, yeah, stop. Yeah, okay. click, done. That's the same thing I did. So I, I, I want to get into a couple things about the movie real quick, though. Okay. Like, the, the actual basis of the movie for back then is cool, but, like, imagine if it was done in, like, a more professional way. I think it would have killed actually like big budget. Like if they had yeah. a big budget movie. Yeah. Yeah. I think if it was a big budget movie, I think it kind of kills man, because like, th- like I said, the basis of it is cool and all that stuff back then. But like, imagine if it was made today by like possibly the dude who did like Lords of chaos or something like, you know what I mean? Like it right. probably Somebody would do something been cool. dark with it. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that, did you hear he's doing the GG Allen doc? Yes. I, yeah. I gotta be honest, with you, man. I tried to watch a G.G. Allen documentary that was on. I think it was like Amazon or Tubi or something. Shout out to Sam Hoyos and Tubi. I couldn't get through it. Yeah, it's a sick fuck. Like I couldn't. I, it was there was nothing. There was nothing redeeming about that documentary. Like, yeah, he, he was a just a dude. deeply disturbed, dark guy, and it was. Yeah, uh, but you're right. This this topic, the idea of modern primitives and body modification, and you know, hanging by the hooks on your back, uh, Amon Ra, Amenra, they do. The lead singer does it. Um, I, back back in the late '90s when piercing came in, that was one of the big things: scarification, body yep. mods, all that. So uh, look up the Enigma, the guy who's tattooed head to toe with a blue jigsaw puzzle with his teeth, his tongue split down the middle and all nine. I mean, it was a thing. You're right. It was definitely a product of its time. And you could probably redo that, remake it nowadays and have it be way more evil and foreboding, you know, without, without the explicit, I mean, you don't even need the explicit violence because there really uh, isn't a lot in the movie. You no, can get, really. a, you can get away with some just deeply creepy shit. I love the part where he's explaining like all the the fucking ball sack piercings and shit, and how much blood there's gonna be. Oh, <laughs> oh man! Is that, that that shit made me laugh? There's another part that made me laugh hard as hell. It's when fucking England is. He's like, somebody gotta take that boy out. <laughs> <laughs> that shit made me laugh so hard, man. Yeah, and there then, was definitely a lot of chewing scenery in this movie. Yeah, the part where fucking his wife. Where he's sitting on the chair and his wife's walking up like doing that weird dance like this, and <laughs> and he's like, yeah, "Oh, she's turning me on." Yeah, and she's dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he throws her. And... <laughs> but so again, look at look at the. I mean, you had you had D. Snyder, you had Wayne Grow from from Heat, you had Linda Cardellini who's on ER, you had Elizabeth Pena who was a well known actress, you had Amy Smart who shows up. Tucker Smallwood's been in a whole bunch of movies. B movies, whatever, as a, as a, as an extra character, and you can't help but look at him and recognize him. Um, the guy who plays the tow truck driver is Robert Lasardo. You would recognize him from, oh my god, you'd recognize him from, uh, oh my god, he was all tatted up. He was in the movie True Blood. He was in Hard to Kill. He was in basically every Steve, every Steven Seagal movie. Um, ready, a uh, Hard to Kill, Gangs of New York, Out for Justice. He was in Leon the Professional. Uh, you would recognize this guy coming a mile away because he looks like an Italian guy from New York with tattoos. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's yo, it's kind of wild. Yo, know, the the best part of the movie is when he gets arrested, and they show him in fucking jail or whatever, and he looks like you know what he looks like. He looks like a fucking black metal nerd that grew up in. Jail. Yes, yes, he's all pasty with his hair pulled back in a ponytail, yeah. wearing khakis. This looks yeah. like a nerd who found black metal and like. Yes, Read poems and shit. That dude, yes. I was crying at that man. Yes, he definitely, he absolutely does. He absolutely does. But so yeah, I mean, fucking funny. You know what movie I lump in with this all the time, Tim? This is another obscure one. I would, I guarantee you've seen it. Fear dot com. Oh yeah, that I always lump that in with this. Why? It's being scared of the internet. It's people who don't understand the internet making it out to be a monster. It's, it's kind of nutty. Right. It's kind of nutty when you think about it. What's funny, because back then, like how big the chat rooms were and stuff like it kind of really hits it perfectly. Yep. Because like you could just be any name you want it and just talk as much shit as you want it or. People don't realize um, 
how big message board internet talking culture was. Like you would just go into Yahoo chat rooms and find yeah. people and just people would literally pull off and have a giant conversation with you. Dude, like AOL instant messenger was huge. Like yes. all that shit, man. Yes. Like yes. A- what, what was the big thing? Age, sex, location. ASL, was age, it? sex, location. Yeah. Yep. Like that's uh, just hilarious to me. I worked at a company, Tim, where that was AOL instant messenger was their internal messaging system. So they use that as a corporate IM. And and people would use like their leftover screen names from when they were using it in like college and such. So I was a horse cow. Uh, one of my colleagues was Roof Jumper. So you'd be in a meeting presenting your screen and all of a sudden you'd see Roof Jumper has has signed off and you'd be like, what is what is that? Like it was. Oh, dude, you remember that? You would jump onto AOL and look at your buddy's list. Yes. Like, oh, shit. Blah, blah, blah's on. And then, like, you go to message them and you hear that closed door sound. Like, God damn it. Or uh, sharing files over AOL IM. Do you remember oh, those days where people would yeah. post their entire music library? You could browse it and download it. That well, was. I did that on IRC. Oh, okay. I wasn't. I was doing it through AOL and it was fantastic. I met a couple of old school lamb goaters who shared everything oh and yeah, i would yeah. just go on and pull down their entire discography that's what me and adam used to do on aol all the time and yeah. then it went to soul seek irc all that kind of shit yep so. yep all right so let's take this one home tim so all in all probably the best new metal centric soundtrack in existence the movie is not bad check it out don't believe the rotten tomatoes feedback it's actually kind of fun kind of enjoyable it's- it's worth a watch. It's Absolutely. super and quick. It's super quick. Yes. Isn't it like 86 minutes or something, Tim? Yeah, it's super quick. It's a fun watch. I mean, it's like you said, it's not terrible, but it's not great. Right. It, it's definitely worth the enjoy watching what somebody in the late 90s thought was going to be transgressive. Right. Yeah, and again, exactly. the club that they go to is called Zabalba. Yeah. Which I is- mean, it's it's. It's, you know, I know what you did last summer and all that shit mixed in with the piercings and the tattoo. It's basically what it is. You yep. know what I mean? It's just Absolutely. stealing from them movies and being trying to be outrageous at the same time. Yes, it was trying to be transgressive. Yep. Yeah, all exactly. right. So once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We, we love all uh, we love all your fans. Uh, you got another music suggestion. You want to come on and do the Mortal Kombat episode with us. You want to do Mortal Kombat soundtrack. Please reach out. Ping us. Find us through email. Newbreedpodcast at gmail.com. Find us through Twitter or Instagram, newbreed underscore podcast. You can find us at r slash new metal. I'm always around poking and talking shit on multiple threads. So want to thank you for tuning in. Want to thank you for listening and watching. Um, on behalf of Tim and myself, until next time, this is a new breed podcast saying cheers. <laughs>